Okay. Hello, my name is Jonathan Payne, and I will be discussing renewable energy with you. Now, first and foremost, renewable energy is an efficient way to generate actually electrical energy for many demands. Now, the term renewable itself is implying that the source cannot be depleted, that uh, being it's an abundance resource that, during enough time, can be used to replace much, much of our infrastructure. So it exists in many forms, such as wind, solar, hydrothermal, geothermal, as well as some, I believe, some fusion power as well. So, however, the current usages for generating energy are, in fact, wasteful due to the fact that such as a hydroelectric dam would require mass destruction and many resources for creating electricity, that being flooding a lot of valleys such as coal mining for coal-fired plants, which will obviously require the destruction of part of the earth in order to retrieve these resources necessary for firing a generator. Now, renewable sources harness existing sources of energy, such as solar and wind, without any necessary damage to the environment. They exist with no limitations for implementation. Now, this brings me to my first quote. A uh, 2013 study on solar power concluded that key advantages are direct conversion of light to electricity through a simple solid state device, absence of moving parts, ability to function unattended for long periods, low maintenance cost, long effective life, high reliability. So, now, renewable energy as it exists today can exceed many energy demands. Now, this is relevant in developed countries as well as in developing countries in itself. So they can sustain the electrical loads across power systems for quite some time, so that is whether it's in the kilowatts, megawatts, or gigawatts, whether or not it's something significant to be worried about. Now, this brings me to my second quote of a six-year operational study in Antarctica. So, six years of successful operation of the Mawson wind farm has demonstrated that even in the world's most hostile environment, wind turbines can make a substantial contribution to the fuel and cost savings in Antarctic operations. Now, the study shows that even in, as I said, the most hostile of places, renewable energy does work. So, which is why we can implement it on a larger scale in more calmer environments if it can survive in hostile environments. Additionally, renewable sources are use passive ways to generate electricity. They do not require serious input that's already existing. What they would do, for example, would be the solar panels just exist. After they are constructed, they are placed in construction sites, absorb the energy, convert photovoltaic light directly into electricity with no immediate impact. Additionally, wind turbines function in the same manner they exist passively, where they stand in one place after being constructed, and the wind effects themselves translate into the electrical energy as it passes through a turbine. So, the input output is quite noticeable due to the fact that the input is negligible, that being such as natural occurring, I guess, events, so sunlight, wind, the Earth's core heating up geothermal generators. Whereas the output is electrical energy. Now, this is significant where it takes energy to make energy. In this case, we don't put in the energy, nature does. So, the impact is negated in the long run due to the fact that the immediate construction costs that go into the immediate construction costs that go into uh, developing renewable energy sources can be negated after the short-term to long-term implementation of these technologies, such as the amount of income you'd be saving or resources that are saved from these technologies being used. So, in conclusion, I'd like to restate that renewable energy is an efficient source of generating energy. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, Jonathan, I, I think your proposition is uh, phrased appropriately. I do think it needs to be labeled a little bit more clearly at the beginning of the speech, because as I heard it, I thought, is that the proposition? I, it wasn't clear in the opening uh, which was in fact your claim. Now at the end of the speech you came back to it and repeated it so it was very clear at that point that that was the proposition uh, and I thought that helped a little bit in clarifying what the argument's about. There's no preview of what the supporting structure is going to be in the speech and so it just feels a little bit like random information that you're presenting and sometimes it's not even random information, it's random claims without any evidence to uh, back that up. You cite a couple of specific pieces of information information, uh, but that's about as far as you go with it. Uh, the controversy, I'm not sure, the controversy is on the efficiency, and I think that that includes a number of things. Cost, the amount that can be produced, uh, its relative cost to other forms of energy, and we don't really get much discussion of that. Nobody is saying that solar energy doesn't work. I don't know anybody who says that it doesn't work, at least to some degree. The question is, like you said, your, your, your term is that it is efficient. Does it work efficiently? Can we get, how much solar energy can we get with the current resources that we have? How much would we have to spend to be able to get enough energy to replace uh, the fossil fuels that we're using? What are the land requirements or what are the, what's the amount of construction that we're talking about? The same thing with the wind turbines. I think you've got a, a demonstration in Antarctica that we wind turbines work. I don't think you have to go all the way to Antarctica to so show that they work. You just go up to uh, Temecula and, and, and or um, to Hatchapi and see examples there. Go out to Palm Springs. They've got a whole bunch of examples of them working out there. The question is, are they efficient? And that's, where are you? You're back there somewhere. You know, are they efficient? So how, you know, we see 50,000 wind turbine things out there in the desert. And, that, and how much energy is it producing? Uh, you know, enough to uh, light Coachella. You know, but is that a sufficient amount? You know, the, the amount of space that we're using, the amount of resources that we did, and instead, if we were spending you know money on, like I said, fossil fuels or something like that, it might be a lot more efficient when it comes to cost or those sorts of things. So I think you need a little bit more comparative data on those arguments. Um, you you need a stronger structure in the speech. Uh, you know, the, I think it basically comes down to a couple of points. You need something that says we can produce a sufficient amount of energy with these alternative resources to uh, adequately create energy for our needs. You know, I don't know how many kilowatts or megawatts or however they measure these th things uh, the United States uses. Let's just use a, I'll make up a number because I don't know exactly how they're measured. 200 kilowatts nationwide, you know, something like that. Okay, well, can you show that uh, these power systems can produce 200 kilowatts of uh, electrical power? If you can, then I think that it's efficient. Now, cost effectiveness, if it takes us five times as much money to produce that kilowatt hours as it does to get it from fossil fuels, then there's a question about its efficiency also. And one of the things that you're missing, although you've kind of referred to it a little bit, and that is what are the environmental costs, and you mentioned kind of it's passive and we don't have destruction of coal mines and all that kind of stuff, but that's a very vague reference to what the uh, environmental impact is. So it seems, it seems to me like you've got a potential organizational structure there, but you haven't really turn them into declarative sentences in the argument, and you need a lot more evidence to support your point. The only evidence that you have is the example of, you know, here's how a solar cell works, and we had an experiment on wind turbines in Antarctica, and basically based on that, you're making an awfully big generalization, and you know, this has been an issue for 50 plus years. People, you know, alternative energies have not they weren't invented last week, last year, five years ago, ten years ago. People have been working on this a long time. So why is it that we don't have them at this point? That's where the controversy is, and that's what I think you need to talk about a little bit more. I think you do a pretty nice job speaking to the audience and uh, delivering the message. Like I said, I think you need a little bit more help in proving your argument. Thank you.